Carrie Kupek Urban. Carrie, you're an astute observer of what's going on. You heard the, the news that's breaking that IRS whistleblowers testify, Gary Shapley, that there is, they have, they've seen evidence that the president uh, committed a crime. What do you make of this news coming in? It's the same time that the Justice Department prosecutor, Leslie Wolf, she stepped down from the Justice Department. She was interviewed today, Carrie. She's the one the IRS whistleblowers alleging she obstructed and stonewalled government officials wanting to investigate the president. What do you think? And that's why it was very disappointing when Jim Jordan revealed this afternoon that Leslie Wolf really didn't answer many questions. And so you have the prosecutor who apparently played a significant role in the investigation into Hunter Biden and who the whistleblowers have said said that they were not to look at Joe Biden, which is a huge allegation, if true. She doesn't answer questions, according to Jim Jordan. We'll wait for the transcript to see how it went. You have the president's son defying a congressional subpoena yesterday, and apparently was in communication with the White House. His father knew about what he was going to do, which, by the way, Liz, raises all kinds of questions about possible obstruction. What were those conversations about? And then, of yeah, course, isn't have... that, let's stay on that for a second. Isn't mm -hmm. it, it is certainly, it is not feasible for a president to think it's okay to talk to somebody who's about who's under congressional subpoena about their testimony and the White House knew ahead of time what he was going to say. Isn't that crossing a line, Kerry? It would seem to be. We don't know what conversation they had, but the White House press secretary told us yesterday at the briefing that the White House knew what he was going to say, and the, that Joe Biden was aware. So I am very curious about that conversation because for, for a couple of reasons. Joe Biden himself, a couple of years ago, said that you people who were defying congressional subpoenas with respect to the January 6th uh, investigation should not full stop. That's a problem. And so now his son is doing that. And, and what's even worse, Liz, in my opinion, is that his son was defying a congressional subpoena that was related to an investigation about him and his father. And so what what were they talking about? I really hope that um, the president did not tell him to do that or not to or say anything, because, again, then you have yeah. possible obstruction issues. Yeah, well, yeah, and there's been, that's been an issue, right, Kerry? Because, again, IRS whistleblower Gary Shapley testifies evidence exists. Joe Biden did something illegal. So, the, the, you know, Kerry, you've been so smart about this stuff. The hypocrisy of Democrats on Hunter Biden defying this subpoena to testify for Congress. They were all about law and order in the past, demanding that people adhere to this and follow this. Let's watch. Watch. The way that we have treated every single witness is the same, that they come in, they talk to the committee. Uh, they're, if they're going to take a deposition, they're sworn under oath, it's videotaped, it's recorded, uh, and then we take it from there. What's your message to people who defy congressional subpoenas on the January 6th committee? I hope that the committee goes after them and uh, holds them accountable. Should they be yeah, so, you know, the thing is, Carrie, here's the thing. If Hunter has nothing to hide, then testify. There's no... They have no problems with what they've been doing. Then testify. Don't hide. I mean, you know, numerous Americans, carry have complied with congressional subpoenas. And by the way, where was Hunter's apology yesterday? Kerry, instead of apologizing, apologizing, he brought up his addiction. People are saying that's manipulative. He's banking on the corruption of others to tilt the scales for him. I mean, the fact that Hunter is again citing his addiction as a foil is offensive. How many truly destitute addicts, right, Kerry, are protected by the Secret Service? Get to spend millions of dollars, jet around the world in Air Force Two, cut business deals with business partners inside of enemy nation states, make them feel like they have an inside edge on U.S. power. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Carrie? Mm -hmm. And while an addiction is sad, and we certainly um, understand why that would be especially hard for a parent to watch their child struggling with something like that, uh, that doesn't excuse bad behavior, and it certainly doesn't excuse criminal behavior. And that, that's across the board, whether you're Hunter Biden or you're someone who's watching at home right now. That, that applies to all of us. And Liz, to your point, if there's nothing to hide, if there's no problem, then why did Hunter Biden defy the congressional subpoena? Why did Leslie Wolf, according to Jim Jordan, re repeatedly refuse to answer questions about her investigation into Hunter Biden? Why does Joe Biden keep lying and, and silly lies at that about not interacting with Hunter's Biden, uh, business associates? We know that's not true. And yet, Hunter, and yet Joe Biden just last week doubled down again and said he never even interacted with them. And yet the White House logs, emails, text messages, the business associates themselves say otherwise. He said that Hunter uh, never did business with China. China uh, Hunter testified in court that he did, and the list goes on. And so I think all of these things 
uh, really bolster the Republicans' argument as to why they need to move forward with an inquiry, because there are so many question marks. Yeah, I mean, Carrie, you've been busting through as they circle the wagons to get at the truth. I mean, you've been in the Justice Department. You know how the government works. Listen, many American families have personally, and I know people who have struggled with addiction, it's a manipulating, the cynical manipulation that goes on. He's, he, listen, if he has a drug addiction, yes. Then, you know, the issue too, Carrie, is, you know, is he like other people in the world, in, in, outside the government sector? You know, and, and claiming his father was not, quote, financially involved, that's a long way from President Biden's initial claim that he'd never spoken to Hunter about his business. And it was just a very bad look for the president of the United States, for his son to stand outside the Capitol and defiantly say that he was not going to go inside and answer questions about his business dealings, his father, when he was compelled by Congress to do so. And we'll see if Congress moves forward, if the House moves forward. They said they're going to, withholding him contempt. At that point, it would be referred to the Justice Department, and then the Justice Department makes a decision as to wh whether to prosecute that or not. Now, as we know, in its history, DOJ has almost never prosecuted contempt of Congress until the last year and a half when they prosecuted and they were convicted, both Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, two tr top aides to Donald Trump. And Steve Bannon was sentenced to four months in jail. He is um, appealing that as we speak. Mm -hmm. And so one has to wonder, that's when Hunter Biden's defense team and Hunter were talking, that they made quite a calculation, knowing that two people were just prosecuted and convicted and sentenced for this, for blowing off a subpoena, and they made a decision to do exactly that because they didn't want him behind closed doors answering questions from serious lawyers on both sides. That's Carrie, quite something. Yeah, it is something. Carrie Kupek-Urban, thanks for your insights and expertise. We appreciate you.